Chương trình từ thủ đô với luật sư Trịnh Quốc Thiên xin trân trọng kính chào quý vị khán thính giả khắp nơi. Thường thì trước mùa Covid gặp nhau trực tiếp, nhưng mà bây giờ là đang trong mùa Covid. Cho nên hôm nay tôi xin giới thiệu với quý vị khán thính giả gần xa một cái buổi làm việc của Thứ trưởng Bộ Thương mại Hoa Kỳ và Bộ trưởng Bộ Thương mại Hoa Kỳ Wilbur Ross đối với chúng tôi thưa quý vị. Thì xin thưa là sẽ là phần tiếng Anh. Tuy nhiên, nếu quý vị nào muốn có tiêu đề Việt ngữ thì có thể nhìn vào màn hình của YouTube ở phía bên tay phải có những ba chấm thì quý vị nhấn vào đó và sẽ có hướng dẫn về tiêu đề tiếng Việt tự động để quý vị có thể nghe trực tiếp từ Thứ trưởng Bộ Thương mại Hoa Kỳ và Bộ trưởng Bộ Thương mại Hoa Kỳ. Thưa với quý vị là như thế. Thì giới thiệu với quý vị gần xa một buổi làm việc. Và đây là Thứ trưởng Bộ Thương mại Hoa Kỳ, ông Andre Iancu. A warm welcome to everyone here today and especially our distinguished council members. You are the leaders, companies and organizations who have stepped up to meet one of the greatest challenges of our time. The importance of the work before us here today cannot be overstated. Since the founding of this great nation, innovation has been the driving force of our economy and our most defining trait as a people. It is no coincidence that the only time the word right is mentioned in the Constitution before the amendments that came later is with respect to intellectual property rights. This concept was that important to our founders. More than two and a quarter centuries later, however, innovation in the United States is overly concentrated demographically, economically, and geographically. For example, Women account for more than half of our national workforce, but only about 13% of inventors named on U.S. patents. For the United States to maintain its edge in an increasingly competitive global economy, this must change. Now, more than ever, we need all hands on deck. A recent study shows that by harnessing the creative talent of all Americans, we could quadruple the rate of innovation and add up to 4.4% to the U.S. per capita GDP. Not only does such participation benefit the United States economy, but also the participating individuals themselves who benefit from accelerating personal growth and career development. For example, workers in IP intensive industries make an average salary that is almost 50% higher than in other industries. Needless to say, innovation and intellectual property benefit companies too. For example, approval of a startup's first patent application increases its employment growth over the next five years by a remarkable 36% on average, and a patent's effect on sales growth is even larger. In short, expanding participation in the innovation ecosystem is one of our nation's best and most tangible opportunities for enhancing economic growth and improving the standard of living and quality of life of every American. So I say, let's go do that. But how? Well, we as a nation need a strategy. We need a national strategy for how we will encourage and equip Americans across all demographics to become inventors and entrepreneurs. And we need a national strategy for how we can ensure their equal opportunity to succeed. We need a national strategy to inspire more young boys and girls to say, I want to be like Lonnie Johnson when I grow up. Lonnie is one of the most prolific African-American inventors alive today with more than 100 U.S. patents. And we are honored that Lonnie is a member of this council. And we need a national strategy to inspire more young girls and boys to say, 
I want to be like Catherine Guarini when I grow up. Catherine is an IBM executive and prolific inventor with more than 65 patents. And Catherine, too, is a member of this council. Thank you both for providing us with your expertise and for your service to this effort. We need all members of the council to help us craft a national strategy that includes STEM and innovation education at all levels, from kindergarten to graduate school. And we need members to help us craft a national strategy that emphasizes employment development, access to capital, and product commercialization. Our plan should identify specifically where along a potential inventor's path we come up short, and specifically how we can address it. And our plan should also include metrics against which results can be measured. As an example, the USPTO's new progress and potential report, which updates the number of women inventors in the United States and breaks the metrics down by company, state, and more. The main point is this, mere rhetoric will no longer suffice. To move the needle, we must act with specificity and we must insist on measurable results. For our part, the USPTO is here to support programs and policies that foster inclusivity. We conduct workshops for women entrepreneurs and outreach events with students to spark their inventive genius. We share stories of trailblazing inventors from minority communities who have changed the dynamics of existing industries and created entirely new ones. We recently launched an online expanding innovation hub to help individuals and organizations remove barriers to invention and demystify the patent application process for new inventors. And we support countless innovation education programs, such as Camp Invention, where almost 150 thousand students each summer, almost half girls, by the way, learn how to be inventors. But we are just one small piece of a much larger puzzle, which is why we launched a long-term effort and created this council to help construct a comprehensive national strategy. We must realize that the work done here today is just the beginning, and we must be committed to seeing this effort through to its completion. Most importantly, we must all be in it together, industry, academia, and government. History will remember this first council meeting as a seminal event, a turning point. The work we begin here today with the help of this distinguished group of leaders from the private and public sectors will make a difference for our economy, our quality of life, and most importantly, for all Americans. I look forward to hearing directly from you, our council members, and to learn from you. Thank you again for being here and for everything that you do. To start us off, I have the great honor to introduce my boss, Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross. Secretary Ross knows what it takes to create a thriving business enterprise. He knows that innovation and intellectual property are essential to the initial viability and long-term success of any company and any industry. As Commerce Secretary, he has aggressively represented the interests of American inventors, American entrepreneurs, and American industries as they fight to remain globally competitive. It is my honor to work with him and to introduce him to you now. Mr. Secretary. introduction and for your leadership at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office during these tumultuous times. I must first say how sorry I am not to be present in person. I had been... Còn đây là Bộ trưởng Bộ Thương mại Hoa Kỳ, ông Wilbur Ross. We commend you and your team for creating this new council at a critical juncture in American history. This is a seminal event that is long overdue. The National Council for Expanding American Innovation is groundbreaking, and I am grateful to serve as a government member 
along with Hugh Andre and the directors of the National Science Foundation, Dr. Panchanathan, and the Small Business Administrator, Jovita Carranza. Thank you also to the CEOs of GM, Bristol Myers, Oracle, J&J, Qualcomm, Eli Lilly, and 3M for joining other leaders from the business, academic, inventor, and venture capital sectors for participating. The country needs and deeply appreciates people like you who are civically engaged and dedicated to improving the livelihood of every American. The new council will address the challenges the U.S. faces in maintaining its position as the world's most innovative nation. American innovation has improved the quality of life for billions of people on this planet. Our success as a nation is tied to our collective embrace of innovation, of invention, of creating new products, new companies, new industries, and new jobs for hundreds of millions of Americans. Imagine during the coronavirus pandemic what our economy would have been like if Americans were not able to telework. It took decades, hundreds of billions of dollars in investment in R&D and trillions of dollars of capital equipment to transform our economy from analog to digital. This collective innovation has literally kept the global economy afloat. And it started long before the invention of the microchip by Bob Noyce and Jack Kilby in the 1950s and the invention of digital networks and photonics in the 1980s. Moore's Law, the doubling of computing capability every 18 months, was suddenly being applied to industries and processes far afield of computing. And now everyone has a Dick Tracy phone in their pocket, and that phone possesses more computing power than the world's most sophisticated supercomputers had a generation ago. But today, we have foreign competitors intent on displacing the United States as the global engine of innovation, ingenuity, and industry. They are doing so by both legitimate and illegitimate means. In its latest Science and Engineering Indicators report, the National Science Foundation notes that China is quickly closing the S&T gap with the United States. China's average annual growth rate in R&D spending was 17.3 percent from 2000 to 2017, compared to 4.3% for the United States. We were growing our R&D at one-fourth the rate at which China was growing. China has now surpassed the U.S. in the number of research publications, accounting for 21% of the global total compared to the U.S.'s 17%. And in the important area of patenting, Chinese inventors accounted for 49% of the utility patent families granted globally in 2018, compared to 6.8% for U.S. investors. They were at almost seven times our rate. In fact, the number of patent applications in China last year, 1.46 million, 
was almost three times greater than the U.S.'s 515,000. And the trend lines are unfavorable. Over the past five years, U.S. patent applications have increased only marginally, whereas they have doubled in China. China is marching headlong toward the goals set forth in its China 2025 strategic plan. It has targeted domination of our most important technologies and our most important industries. The 2025 date is no accident. It will mark the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party's founding in Shanghai in 1925. China is investing hundreds of billions of dollars in its universities and in the creation of national champions aimed at dominating technological development and global technology markets. We see the results in dozens of other indicators, including our trade balance in advanced technology products, our declining market shares in numerous tech industries, and the growing number of Chinese students studying the physical sciences and engineering. And now, with the coronavirus, China has upped the ante, using the global pandemic to seek an even stronger foothold in global advanced technology markets. President Trump, Director Yanku, the team at Commerce, the American people, and all of you understand what is at stake. At the Trump administration, we've been addressing these challenges with new tax, new trade, new regulatory, and new workforce policies. But we have a lot more to do. Simply stated, too small a segment of the American population is engaged in the innovation economy and in the creation of inventions the development of new and novel products, and the formation of entrepreneurial companies. Because of the Success Act, the USPTO studied the available literature and found deep inequalities that exist in the innovation enterprise with a plethora of white males and a dearth of minorities women, and veterans. We will have difficulty being successful as a nation if we do not have more people engaged in the creative economy. It is your charge to change this dynamic and to do so quickly. What you propose as a national council must permeate through all of America's industries, its academic settings, and its government offices. We must chart a lasting path to permanent change. Please, please, do not just write a report that sits on everybody's shelf. We have far too many of those already. We need you to develop a concrete, an implementable plan to enlarge engagement in our innovation enterprise, and not by a little, but by a lot. History must remember this initial council meeting as a great day for America, when a fresh energy was unleashed across the country in communities that need new hope. It must boost the economic and quality of life for this country in a way that has never been seen before. It is my honor to be part of today's event, and I sincerely wish you the very best in this endeavor. 
We are all counting on you. Thank you.